from a gearhead's garage to the Bonneville Salt Flats, home of the world's fastest speedway. Every summer, people take streamliners, roadsters, motorcycles, and more that they build in places like this to shoot the salt and try to set a world record. Bonneville is not a bucket list, it's a lifestyle. It's the last amateur racing on the face of the earth, pretty much. It's a hot rod mecca, so anybody who's into cars, it's electric for them. But for us, it's, it's like a family reunion. Eat, breathe, drink Bonneville soft flats I have for years. That's what I do. Going 200 miles an hour for the first time, my eyes were this big and looking out. I, I don't know what was going on inside the car. It gets to be a part of you, and it's hard to live without. It's just a love, a love to do it. Larry Volt gave me an opportunity to drive his car. It was the first time I'd ever been on the salt. We weren't doing records or anything. Larry just let me drive 200 miles an hour. I went through my licensing, but that, that was it. I was, I was hooked. You know when, when you got a good run going, you, know, you can hear the motor, it, it really wants to pick up and, and go. How fast can you afford to go? The first thing you gotta do is you gotta decide what your budget is. We go through the rule book and we find what motor is going to be the best choice for us to try and get a record this year with the parts that we have and the money that we have. Well, that's what you're out there for. You're just out there to chase the record and uh, see uh, how fast you can, you can pump that record up. The need for speed at the Salt Flats was fueled by World War II veterans who came home and souped up their roadsters, searching for a bigger thrill and a faster hot rod. I have family members that were in World War II, so I'm kind of attached to that history. And when I get in a roadster and drive as fast as I can, I, I feel attached to people that have done it before. Racing on the salt began in 1914. Teddy Tetzlaff raced a 300 horsepower Blitzen Benz, clocking in at 142.8 miles per hour. That was the first of many land speed records set here on the Salt Flats. In the 1930s, local legend Ab Jenkins set multiple endurance records on the salt. Pretty soon, the Bonneville Salt Flats became an international destination for gearheads. Jenkins sold the idea of the raceway to British racers John Cobb and Malcolm Campbell. They used the venue to set flat-out land speed records. We're talking speeds near 400 miles per hour. The last race for Mormon Meteor III, a famous two-and-a-half-ton racing car with its 850-horse engine. And for Ab Jenkins, 68-year-old dean of American racing drivers. It's the end of a long, colorful career for the former mayor of Salt Lake City, holder of many safety awards, as he goes for one last dash on the Bonneville Salt Flats. He's off to break 40 American and world records over the vast salt flats where he first started racing 20 years ago. Just short of the 200-mile mark, with 24 new records under his belt, the engine suddenly overheats. Blinded by smoke and fumes, Jenkins has to call it quits. Old Mormon Meteor, a smoking meteor at that, has set its last speed mark. And Jenkins, the old master racer, winds up a fabulous career behind the wheel. Said Ab, I've outworn the car. That's more than 100 years of racing here on the salt. Just one glimpse of this mesmerizing sea of crystals, and you'll understand why it's one of the most unique landscapes in North America. The Bonneville Salt Flats are an amazing resource. They're about a 30,000 acre salt playa that are the remnants of the ancient Lake Bonneville. A lake that covered good portion of the state of Utah about 20,000 years ago at the height of the last glacial maximum when we were in our last ice age. As that lake dried up over 10,000 years, it left behind this little lens of salt, all the solutes that were in the water of the lake concentrated in this one area. So the salt flats, we believe, are, are sort of the last snapshot of what was in that lake water as it dried up. 
those salt flats every year undergo a dynamic cycle of flooding where precipitation melts the surface salt. And then in the summer, as it gets hot and dry, it evaporates into a hard, crystallized salt flat. The salt flats have a very unique seasonality to the landscape and how it changes through time and goes through these annual flooding, evaporation, and desiccation cycles. It's a very dynamic landscape and the surface environment changes really dramatically as the amount of water that's here changes. This water is totally saturated with, with sodium chloride, the ingredients to make halite or salt. It's the same kind of mineralogy crystal structure as the salt that we sprinkle on our french fries. Everything about the Bonneville Salt Flats is impressive, intense, and unique. Just imagine that view from the vantage point of a driver barreling down a path of what appears to be infinite salt. In the first mile, you're so busy, you don't see the first mile because you're focused on what the car has to do. You only look out the windshield long enough to make sure you're still between these two mile marker boards that are a little over 100 feet apart. They're orange and they're six foot squares, and you only make sure that you're between them. See, the Bonneville Salt Flats is the only place on the planet you can actually see the curvature of the Earth. So you only get to see visually about three and a half miles. And when you're running 300 miles an hour, those six foot tall mile marker boards actually come up over the horizon like flashcards, because you're traveling that fast. That time from when you leave the starting line to where you go through the last timing trap, there's no telling what can happen. The day before we got in the 200 mile an hour club, I spun a little bit over 200. At that point, I was, I was about ready to call it. My mom's crying on the one side, you know, my, my dad's upset. I'm upset, I'm heartbroken. The car's banged up. Everyone around me came and donated time, parts. We put the car back together, passed tech, went the next day and broke our speed. We went 208. 208.15. Woo! Woo! Yeah! Uh, it's a hot rodder. It's almost a sin if you don't go to Bonneville. I mean, people that live in Utah that haven't been out there, it's crazy. You get out there early in the morning when you, people are getting ready to do their record runs, there's no other feeling like it. It is just like, ah, this is where I should be. Everybody wants to know how fast their car will go. There's no money, there's no sponsorship. You go out and drive because you, you love to build things that go fast. This is Utah is made possible in part by the George S. and Dolores Story Eccles Foundation, the Utah Office of Tourism, the Lawrence T. and Janet T. D. Foundation, and the contributing members of KUED. Thank you.